Hello, Lily here. Today we are starting with class 3, chapter 13, your last chapter of your English textbook. And the name of the chapter is The Happy Prince Who Finds an Odd Companion on a Strange Journey. And the author is Oscar Wilde. So in this story you have narrator, the swallow, the happy prince, sick child, sick child's mother, the winter, the match girl, the mayor, and the city council. Narrator High above the city, on a tall column, stood the statue of the happy prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold, for eyes he had two bright sapphires, and a large red ruby glowed on his sword hilt. Swallow, settling below the princess's feet to sleep. What luck! I have a golden bedroom tonight. Swallow, wakes after a drop falls on him. Not a cloud in the sky, yet it's raining. How strange! Swallow wakes up again annoyed. What is the use of a statue if it cannot keep the rain off us poor folks? He looks up and is shocked to see the statue crying. Happy Prince I am the Happy Prince swallow shocked why are you crying then you've made me completely wet happy prince when i was alive and had a human heart i did not know what tears were i lived in a palace and sorrow was not allowed to enter inside now that i am dead and have a lead heart they have set me up here so high that I can see all the sadness in my city, and so I weep. Swallow, murmuring to himself, lead hard, so you are not completely made, of, made out of gold. Happy Prince, far away in a little street, there is a poor house. Inside the house is a poor woman whose son is very sick. He has fever and is asking for oranges, but his mother does not have any money to buy them. Happy Prince, swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you give her the ruby out of my sword hilt? Swallow, I can't. My friends are waiting for me in Egypt, and I must fly there before it gets too cold. Happy Prince, swallow, swallow, little swallow, Will you not stay with me for one night and be my messenger? The boy is so thirsty and the mother so sad. Swallow, I don't think I like boys. Last summer, when I was staying on the river, there were two rude boys, the miller's son, who were always throwing stones at me. They never hit me. Of course, we swallows fly far to well for that, but it was mean of them to throw stones. Happy Prince, looking at the swallow sadly, please, swallow, it is very cold here, but I will stay with you for one night and be your messenger. Prince, thank you, little swallow. The swallow flies away and the lights dim down. The lights come alive on the stage right. We see the swallow fluttering its wings above a sick child laying on the ground before flying away. Narrator So the swallow picked out the great ruby from the princess's sword and flew away with it in his beak over the roofs of the town. He placed the ruby next to the ailing child's bed and even fanned him with his wings. Sick child. Ah, I feel so cool. 
I must be getting better. The lights on center stage come back and on and we see the swallow at the foot of the prince. Swallow, tonight I go to Egypt. Happy prince, swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you not stay with me one night longer? Swallow, I am waited for in Egypt. Tomorrow my friends will fly further south to the jungles of Africa. They are waiting for me to join them. Happy Prince Swallow, swallow, little swallow, far away across the city I see a young man leaning over a desk covered with papers. He is trying to finish a play for the theater, but he, it, he is too cold to write anymore. There is no fire in his room and his hunger has made him faint. Swallow, I will wait with you one night longer because you really had a good heart. Shall I take him another ruby? Happy Prince, alas, I have no ruby now. My eyes are all that I have left. They are made of rare sapphires. Pluck out one of them and take it to him. Swallow, weeping, I cannot do that. Happy Prince, swallow, swallow, little swallow, please do as I command you. The swallow flies away and the lights dim down. The lights come alive on the stage right. We see a poor, cold, hungry writer working on his play. Narrator, so the swallow plucked out the princess's eye and flew away to the student's room. It was easy enough to get in, as there was a hole in the roof. Through this he darted and came into the room. The young man had his head buried in his hands, so he did not hear the flutter of the bird's wings, and when he looked up, he found the beautiful sapphire lying on the withered violets writer looking happy someone likes my plays and gave me this now i can finish my play the lights dim down and come alive on the center stage we see the bird at the princess's feet again swallow i am finally going to egypt i came to bid you goodbye happy prince Swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you not stay with me one night longer? Swallow, it is winter and the chill snow will soon be here. In Egypt, the sun is warm on the green palm trees. Dear prince, I must leave you, but I will never forget you. Next spring, I will bring you back two beautiful jewels in the place of those you have given away, Prince. In the square below, there is a little match girl. She has let her matches fall in the gutter, and they are all spoiled. Her father will beat her if she does not bring home some money, and she is crying. Swallow. I will stay with you one night longer, but I cannot pluck out your second eye. You would be quite blind then. Prince, swallow, swallow, little swallow, please do as I command you. Lights dim down and brighten stage right, and we see a match girl sobbing the swallow flies to her. Narrator so he plucked out the princess's other eye and darted down with it. He swooped past the match girl and slipped the jewel into the palm of her hand. Match girl, laughing and running home, what a lovely bit of glass. The lights dim down and come alive to center on center stage. We see the bird at the princess's feet again. Swallow, you are blind now, so I will stay with you always. Prince, no little swallow, you must go away to Egypt. Swallow, sleeping at the princess's feet, I will stay with you always. Narrator, 
All the next day, the swallow sat on the princess's shoulder and told him stories of what he had seen in strange lands. He told him of the red beasts who stand in long rows on the banks of the Nile and catch goldfish in their beaks. Of the Phoenix, who is an old, as old as the world itself and lives in the deserts and knows everything. Of the merchants who walk slowly by the side of their camels and carry amber beads in their hands. Prince Dear little swallow, you tell me of marvelous things, but more marvelous than anything is the suffering of man and of woman. There is no mystery so great as mystery, misery. Fly over my city, little swallow, and tell me what you see there. Narrator So the swallow flew over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses, while the beggars were sitting at the gates. He flew into dark lanes and saw the white faces of starving children looking out at the black streets. Under the archway of a bridge, two little boys were laying, laying in one another's arms to try and keep themselves warm. The swallow saw a watchman chase them away and they wandered out into the rain. Then Swallow then flew back and told the prince what he had seen. Prince, I am covered with fine gold. You must take it off leaf by leaf and give it to my poor. Narrator Leaf after leaf of the fine gold the Swallow picked off till the happy prince looked quite dull and grey. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold he brought to the poor and the children's faces grew rosier and they laughed and played games in the street. The swallow plucks the good foil of the happy prince. Then the snow came and after the snow came the frost. The poor little swallow grew colder and colder, but he would not leave the prince. He loved him too well. One day the swallow knew that he was going to die. He had just strength to fly up to the prince's shoulder once more. Swallow, goodbye, dear prince. Will you let me kiss your hand? Prince, I am glad that you are going to Egypt at last, little swallow. You have stayed too long here. Swallow, it is not to Egypt that I am going. I am going to the house of death. Narrator, and he kissed the happy prince on his hands and fell down dead at his feet. At that moment, a curious clock sounded inside the statue sounded inside the statue as if something had broken. The fact is that the leaden heart has snapped right in two. It certainly was a dreadfully hard frost. Lights off. Narrator Early the next morning, the mayor was walking in the square below in company with the town councillors. As they passed the column, he looked up at the statue. Lights come on. We see the mayor and four council members inspecting the statue, now shabby. Mayor, dear me, look how shabby the happy prince looks. The ruby has fallen out of his sword. His eyes are gone and he is golden no longer. He is little bitter than a beggar. Council members, how right you are, how shabby indeed. Mayor, and here is a dead bird at his feet. We must issue a law that birds are not to be allowed to die here. Narrator, so they pulled down the statue of the happy prince. As he was no longer beautiful, he was no longer useful.
narrator, they melted the statue in a furnace, and the mayor held a meeting of the corporation to decide what was to be done with the metal. But when they melted the statue, they could not melt the broken lead heart in the furnace. So they threw it on a dust heap where the dead swallow was also lying. A metal heart is kept next to the dead swallow. The narrator walks towards the metal heart and the dead bird. He picks the heart up. Narrator I have walked the city looking for its most precious objects. I have looked for it in its libraries. I have searched for it in its museums. I have unearthed its gold and jewels. But, uh, but of all its knowledge, relics and wealth, there is nothing that is more precious than this lead heart and this little bird. Now, A1. State whether the following statements are true or false. 1. The happy princess statue is in Egypt. False. 2. The swallow does not help the match girl. False. 3. The happy prince believes in sacrifice. True. 4. The people in the town are very rich. False. 5. The swallow is loyal to the happy prince. True. Question and answers. We will refer to the notebook here. Ideas are a group of words whose meaning is different from the meanings of each individual word. Here are a few items. Use them to complete the sentences given below. Make necessary changes. 1. After playing football in the rain, Sitad was caked with mud when he came home. 2. You may be good at math, but your sister does better at science, so don't you turn up your nose. 3. Athletes usually do a few exercises to warm up before a race. 4. Uncle Harry belched loudly after fill of pudding. 5. Mita was out of breath when she reached the top of the step steep hill. A preposition is a word that shows the relationship between a noun and other words in the sentences. In this chapter, you will learn about prepositions of time, for and since, place, position, and movement. Preposition of time. Preposition of time show the time of an action. They are for and since. Preposition of place. Preposition of place show where something or someone is. Some common preposition of place are at, in, on, under, above, behind, in front of, over, between, below, and beside. Preposition of position. Prepositions of position show the position of something or someone. Some common preposition of positions are to, against, over, and across. And preposition of movement. Preposition of movement show movement to or from a place. Some common preposition of movements are to, towards, into, through, and across. Identify and underline the prepositions and state their types. 1. The lady lived in a house near a big forest. It is the preposition of position. Number 2. The children climbed on his back. Preposition of place. 3. Bears can get bad tempered if they are tied up for too long. A preposition of place. 4. Molly learned against the wall. Preposition of position. And it has been raining since morning. Preposition of time. 
Complete the following sentences using prepositions. 1. The lady had to walk for an hour through the forest. 2. The bear and his mistress had to swim ashore after falling in what in the water. 3. When the lady was halfway to the forest, she heard the crackling of leaves behind her. 4. She got angry and hit him on the nose. 5. I was walking towards the bank when I saw the robber. Now, in this chart, we will just complete the words. Cheek and chips. Tech and cord. Chef and Chicago. And the next page. Name the sports in the pictures and find out how they are played. This is equestrian, this is horse raking, this is polo cross, and this is horse polo. Now the notebook. Question number one. Why does the happy prince weep? Answer. The happy prince weeps as he sees all the sadness in his city. 2. Where did the swallow want to go in the lesson? Answer. The swallow wants to visit Egypt in the lesson. Question number 3. What are the things that the happy prince gives away through the swallow? Answer. The prince gives away the ruby from his sword then a sapphire from his eyes. Soon after, he takes golden leaf by leaf to the poor. 4. What is the moral of the play, The Happy Prince? Explain with examples from the play. Answer. The play teaches us several things. It teaches about kindness of the swallow who stops his journey to help the prince. It teaches about sharing from the prince. Even when he turned into a statue, he gave whatever he had left to the people of the city, whom he loved the most. It teaches us about friendship between the swallow and the prince, who in the end sacrificed their lives for each other. Question number five. How many people does the happy prince and the swallow help? Who are they? Both the happy prince and the swallow help three people in the city. The first was the poor woman whose son was very sick. The second was a young man who was so hungry that he did not have money to buy anything to eat. The last was a match girl who is unable to sell any matches as her matches fell in the gutter. Question number six. What is your impression about the mayor and the town councillor? Answer. The mayor and the town councillors seems insensitive of the statue of Prince who was generous in his time but is no longer remembered because he doesn't look fancy for the mayor. And the workbook. Look at these sentences. Rita called her aunt last evening. Rita called on her aunt last evening. In the first sentence, the verb called means telephoned. In the second sentence, the words called on, taken together, mean visited. This meaning is different from the individual meanings of the words called and on. Thus, we see that when a verb is used with another word, it forms a special phrase with a new meaning, such combinations are called phrasal verbs. Rewrite sentences after replacing the underlined words with phrasal verbs for the, from the box. Notice that the phrases consist of verb plus of. 
take off, cut off, ran off, turned off, and fell off. Number one, their electricity was cut off when they didn't pay the bill. Number two, I want to go home and take off my uniform before I come out with you. Three, Madhu turned off the lights very early and went to sleep. Four, my dog ran off yesterday and tried to go to office with my father. Five, Arun hurt himself when he fell down from the ladder. We will say fell off the ladder. Now, a simile is a figure of speech that compares two things or persons which are not similar. It is usually a phrase that begins with as or like. Fill in the blanks with the correct word from the box to complete the similes. The first one has been done for you. 1. As proud as a peacock, as cold as ice, as busy as a bee, as sly as a fox, as wise as an owl, as white as snow, as fit as a fiddle, as dead as a doorknob, as brave as a lion, and as blind as a bat. Make questions to suit the answers with the words given in parentheses. The first one has been done for you. 1. I returned from Agra yesterday. When? When did you return from Agra? 2. My pen was stolen. What was stolen? 3. Jahangir became king after Akbar. Who became king after Akbar? 4. Mira came back early from school because she was not feeling well. Why did Mira came back early from school? 5. Cotton grows in Madhya Pradesh. Where does cotton grow? 6. We expect about 8 guests. How many guests do we expect? 7. The program will go on for about 2 hours. How long will the program go on? 8. I finished reading this book yesterday. When did you finish reading this book? Now interjections express strong feelings. Remember that an interjection is always followed by an exclamation mark. Match the feelings in column A with the interjections in column B. Joy, hooray, sadness, oh no, excitement, wow, pain, ow, greeting, hi. Read each sentence and write the correct interjection in the blank. 1. Wow, what a beautiful sunset. Oh no, I stepped on a nail. Hi, I'm Arvind. Ow, I dropped the teacup. Hurrah. 1. The match. In groups of four, ask each other a question about the weather and answer them. For example, question, is it raining? Yes, it is or no, it is not. Question, was it raining yesterday? No, it wasn't raining. You should complete the dialogue. Hi mom, how are you doing? Mom, I am doing fine and reached here at 8 o'clock. Was your flight on time? No, it was late by 30 minutes. Have you arrived to your hotel? Yes, I have. It is a beautiful hotel overlooking the London Eye. Wow, mom, you are so lucky. Wish I could also join you. Don't worry, next year I'll take you with me. That's great, mom. Looking interesting. Got to go now. We'll call you tomorrow, darling. Okay, mom. Goodbye. So if you enjoyed my video, please do like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.